Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. This is the video that I look forward to all freaking year long. I am extremely passionate about fragrance, all right? I think that's glaringly obvious, but when it comes to fall perfumes, I, I hereby dub myself the queen of fall fragrances. <laughs> this is by far my favorite category of fragrance that possibly exists because this is the moment. This is my time to shine. This is when I feel most Anna. And California is doing me a disservice right now because the last couple weeks it's been in the hundreds. It has not been kind to me. So it's gonna be a hot minute before I can actually wear these, unfortunately. But the official first day of fall is coming. So I gotta get my recommendations out there for those of you who are luckily experiencing cooler weather. And I am so hyped about this topic that this will be the first video of two fall fragrance recommendations, okay? We are categorizing it. This video is dedicated to my niche and luxury designer fragrances. And next week's video will be designer and affordable niche. And I will also be mentioning different fragrances in this video from my top fall recommendations from last year's video, just to give you a variety, something new. So if you want even more recommendations, just watch that one. Um, where to begin? So many goodies. You know what? Let's go with this one. We're going to start with Lise Bow. Did I not tell you? Did I not tell you that there was going to be a hefty dent in this perfume when I hauled it? This is absolutely a lifer fragrance for me and it is a blime and shine that I could only pick 10 for my top 10 for life in my last video. Are you guys interested in seeing kind of like a follow up to that? Would you be interested in seeing what my other four life fragrances are? Let me know. Listen, my boyfriend is, dare I say, pickier than me when it comes to fragrance, which is shocking because, because I'm, I'm ruthless. <laughs> I am very particular. I genuinely only love like 5% of all the fragrances I've ever tried, smelled, etc. But I do appreciate all sorts of scent profiles where my boyfriend is specifically, you know, into the woody realm. This blew his mind. And this is officially a signature scent of his. He cannot get enough and neither can I. It is so damn good. The creamiest, fluffiest, coziest, woody vanilla. Oh my gosh. And it's such a unique woody note as well. We have redwood pine. So if you are in California or you visited California and if you want kind of a memento to the California coast, the sequoias, check this out. Okay. Um, I love this because it definitely has that note, but you're not going to straight up be smelling like you're in a sequoia forest. No, this absolutely smells like a fragrance. The vanilla note in here is very dominant as well. It's very airy, but it also has this kind of whipped, fluffy creaminess to it. You got a little bit of this dry tobacco note, which is personally my favorite. Listen, I adore tobacco, but I'm not into tobacco dominant fragrances that have this like heavy kind of fruity, element to it as well. It's like a wet tobacco and then loads of fruit and it's like sweet but deep and it's just like, ugh, it's a bit of a mess for me personally. So it's not too much, but it's like, ooh. And then this balmy, sweet, resinous incense, alibinum. It's powdery, it's warm, and it has a touch of this aromatic feel. This is perfectly unisex. And honestly, you can wear this year round, any occasion, it suits everything. It's an excellent fragrance and it has amazing performance. This next fragrance, I am beyond thrilled to finally have this in my collection. Who remembers this? Who remembers me talking about this about a year ago? 
It's been on my wish list for far too long and she's finally home. Obviously all the fragrances I'm going to be talking today best suit the fall category in my personal opinion, but there is something about Carolina Herrera's Amethyst Haze that is the true embodiment of fall. All the fall vibes, everything that we love about fall, the coziness, the whole experience, Amethyst Haze sets the scene. I do my best to try to paint pictures of the fragrances that I describe for you guys, but there's certain fragrances that just like, their story is handed to me on a silver platter. It just speaks to me. Lavender vanillas have become one of my favorite scent profile combinations in perfumery. It's these vanilla combinations I'm discovering in particular that I'm obsessed with. Juniper vanillas, lavender vanillas, and iris vanillas. And this is the end all be all of lavender vanillas. This is my number one favorite. So that lavender really pops in the opening. So if you just straight up and down hate lavender, it's not gonna be for you. But the way this is blended is pure perfection and the way it dries down is so addicting. The lavender definitely smooths out and melds with the other notes the longer it sits on your skin. And contributing to that kick in the opening, we have cardamom and pink pepper, which I just love. I just love as spicy notes. If you love Maison Margiela's replica coffee break, Amethyst Haze is a no brainer. You will love this and I adore coffee break, but this is definitely a step up or two from that. Firstly, the performance is impeccable. This will be lasting you all day. Secondly, it has a bit more of a wow factor. It's a better blend. It's more masterfully crafted in my opinion. Although, like I said, I literally love coffee break. The coffee is so lovely in here. It's not this blast of coffee where this is you know, like an edible gourmand. It's not like deep, dark roast coffee beans that overtake the entire fragrance. In my opinion, it really shares the stage, the trio of coffee, vanilla, and lavender. The vanilla is gorgeous, so smooth. We have a cozy cashmere wood note in the base. You guys, amethyst haze smells like curling up on the couch on like the most quintessential fall day. You're sitting by the fire, reading a book, you have some candles lit, you are having a moment. Oh my gosh. Wow, would you look at that? <laughs> yes, the cap is magnetic. Wearing, you know, this adorable oversized chunky knit sweater, cozying up in the blankets, and you're drinking your lavender vanilla coffee latte out of this super cute mug. You know how it, like that's the thing, that's cool lavender coffees nowadays. That's amethyst haze. It's freaking impeccable. And I have tried like 90%, 95% of the Carolina Herrera private line and amethyst haze is by far my favorite. It's actually the only one that I wanted a full bottle of. Highly, highly recommend that you try this. They have samples on fragrances line. I have a list of websites in my description box. I always list of places I like to go to to get samples. It is beyond cozy and addicting and it just makes me think of a fall cozy day at home in London. Um, never been, but that's a vibe. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the beauty from Maison Crevelli Hibiscus Mahajad. All right, listen, this can be worn year round, except I would not be wearing this in the hot summer because it is strong. But I feel like this fragrance does the most. It shines in the cooler weather because this is a beast <laughs> of a fragrance. This is a gorgeous, clearly hibiscus based fragrance and it's a very realistic hibiscus note. So if you're familiar with drinking hibiscus tea, eating hibiscus flowers, it really does smell like that. And it is an incredibly intoxicating, deep, unique version of that. It has a very smooth, sugared, 
creamy vanilla note that ties it all together. That vanilla is addicting. It keeps drawing you in and I love the rose note that's in here. As, as you guys might know, I'm not a fan of rose, but I like her in here. She is extremely modern, not mature or deep Middle Eastern smelling like spicy rose. No, no. Very classy and yet very mysterious and intriguing, bold. She doesn't apologize, <laughs> okay? She's really showing up and doing the most. This is a very confident woman that knows she's hot. She knows it. And it has a real richness and dark undertone to it from the leather, but it's very smooth in my opinion. You do need to sample this first because there are mixed opinions on it. I find the majority of people just absolutely love it, but sometimes the mint cassis or leather note on certain people's skin can maybe not pull in a way that they desire. Luckily, that is not an issue for me. And the mint and cassis give it a very unique, fresh twist to the fragrance. Incredibly well done. And this is an extrait de parfum concentration, truly, when I tell you, you need like two or three sprays. And that's coming from the classic over sprayer. You will genuinely choke yourself out if you go crazy with that one, but that makes it perfect for the cooler months. The next one, I am so excited to have this in my collection finally. I had this on my wish list for a while because of Fenix or Charlie here on YouTube. She gave me a sample and I was like, it is one of my favorite things when a fragrance is not love at first sniff, but intrigue at first sniff. Like there is something about it that is so unique and special and it truly does wow me and sends me on a bit of a journey because those fragrances honestly become some of my favorite fragrances in my whole collection. I find them so fascinating and truly art pieces. So I'm so grateful to Twisted Lily for sending me Maison Crevelli's Iris Malikan because I genuinely was going to buy this with my own money. I had to have it. The first time I smelled this, I was just like, whoa what is that? <laughs> because I genuinely have never smelled another fragrance like this before in my life. I can't compare this to anything. Definitely earthy, but not smelling like dirt. Okay. Hell no. Nature turned fragrance luxury. It's very hard to describe this one. It's green, fresh, woodsy, peppery. And then you get this huge blast of orris, which is very thick, dense, creamy, powdery. And it comes off like pencil shavings a bit as well. An attractive leather undertone. And as it dries down, that vanilla peeks through. And a lot of people describe this to have this chocolatey quality to it. At least I don't pick up chocolate in the usual kind of sense. I more so get this background of creamy white chocolate, a little bit of that vibe. I also don't get the butteriness that people sometimes describe. Is it creamy? Absolutely, but it, there's nothing about this that smells buttery to me. Perfectly unisex, very aromatic. The person that wears Iris Melikan is the person that genuinely doesn't give a flying about what others think about them. They really don't. That's so below them. Like, n not even a thought in their mind. They're very well-traveled, extremely intelligent. They love learning and really enjoy going on adventures alone. They appreciate and value their me time. They're very independent and have a dominant nature to their character, for sure. So the first day I wore this, I was just really blown away by the craftsmanship of Iris Melikan. I didn't know in that moment if I needed a bottle. I was kind of going back and forth, but the longer it sat on my skin, the more I fell in love with it and I couldn't get it on my head. I'm pretty sure I dreamt <laughs> about wearing this scent. So I wore it the next day. And on that second day, I was like, oh yes, absolutely. And to my surprise, I actually got a compliment at work from someone, which 
This fragrance smells impeccable to me. I truly think this is going to be a lifer fragrance for me, but it is not crowd pleasing. This is not going to be a perfume that everybody loves. It's really something you have to discover, get more experience with it, and it has a very specific niche in terms of the kind of person it appeals to. And this coworker of mine, she's never complimented me on any other fragrances that I've worn. You know, other very crowd pleasing, likable scents, no. But this one, she was like, Anna, I have to say, you smell really freaking good today. And I also wanna say, don't really look at the notes to get a good idea of what this fragrance smells like because a lot of the notes listed just do not sound good to me. Let's go over them. Galbanum, oh my gosh, that is one of my most hated notes of all time. Like just, ugh, absolutely disgusting. <laughs> I hate that as a note but that is a non-issue in here. Yes, this fragrance absolutely has this green, fresh, woodsy, aromatic quality to it, but it's more of an experience of literally being in the fresh woods, like the cypress note that's in there. I also don't like the note of mimosa. It's just this like, bleh, <laughs> yellow floral to me. Kind of mature, you know? And leather, I'm very iffy with. If it's dominant and it's like, you know, masculine leather, car leather, le no, absolutely not. A smooth leather, a supporting leather, I like that. So yeah, if I was looking at the notes alone, I just would never have tried this, but because of the reviews of Fenix and Karina Waldron, I was like, okay, I have to try it because they, they've they just been raving about this one. So yeah, I say give it a try, give it a sample, even if it maybe doesn't sound like your cup of tea, but I say be into your woodsy, creamy powdery scents. It is ultra luxurious and is one of the best iris vanilla woody perfumes I have ever smelled. It truly blew me away. And you guys know I always have my special offer with Twisted Lily listed in the description box. Another serious wow factor perfume for me which is like the true definition of intoxicating is Ex Nihilo's Brompton Immortals. And this is by far my favorite Ex Nihilo fragrance that I've tried so far. You guys also know my love for Fleur Narcotique, but this is number one. This is number one. Oh my gosh, because it has saffron in here and it's that freaking addicting, airy, sweet saffron. I see some people kind of making comparison to Baccarat Rouge by 40 with this one. I disagree, they're very different fragrances, but they do share that kind of sweet, addicting, airy quality, but it's not the same saffron that pulls cotton candy, you know? Special occasion, date night, sultry, seductive, intriguing. Oh my gosh, like femme fatale kind of fragrance. And the saffron combined with the vanilla, which is a very airy vanilla, it doesn't smell edible or thick, creamy, you know, gourmand in that kind of way. It's a very airy, sugary kind of vanilla. And there's a stunning background of rose. It's like a classic romantic rose, but it's not too loud. Low key, I feel like this is what the enchanted rose smells like in Beauty and the Beast because it truly smells enchanting, magical, and it is so beautiful and modern, captivating. There's a very likable spiciness and edge that this perfume has from the pink pepper we have patchouli grounding it and a libanum, a little bit of a langy lang that just uplifts the fragrance a little bit. It truly smells like the most elegant, dramatic red ball gown. So if you have anything, you know, fancy coming up this fall season or date night, or you just, you know, want to intoxicate people around you on a daily basis, then get this. This next fragrance has been on my wish list from the moment I smelled it, when I bought EBK's Deep in Desire yacht, they also sent a sample discovery set. And I had no intention whatsoever in trying this fragrance because it has the notes of neroli and orange blossom. Orange blossom being one of my most hated perfume notes 
ever. I cannot stand orange blossom. It genuinely makes me nauseous, that like syrupy, sweet, artificial, cloying, oh boy. And it's like in everything. It's a very popular note. Unlucky for me. But this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance. I was shocked that I genuinely love this. EBK's Ruby and Vanilla Neroli. It truly blows my mind that I love this. This is hands down the best orange blossom fragrance I have ever smelled in my freaking life. This is the most luxurious, refined, masterfully crafted orange blossom. It is not cloying in the slightest. It is not synthetic. It is not fake. It is not syrupy, medicinal, anything. All those things that I hate about orange blossom, it is not. So if you, like me, are not into orange blossom, I say give this a try. And if you do love orange blossom, honey, this is going to blow your mind. This smells like the most luxurious woman. She is always decked out. You know, jewelry, hair, makeup. She is extremely into fashion. She's always overdressing. And she has old money. A little bit of royalty in her family lineage. And this is a fragrance that can be worn year-round. I wouldn't wear this in 90 plus degree weather because this has a honeyed quality to it. A very smooth, warm, sweet, quality to it. And a lot of people describe this to be a summer vanilla because it's neroli and fresh and orange blossom, but I personally disagree. I would fit it into the fall category because of that real warmth. So, I mean, it depends on you. It depends on your preference and your skin, but this is how I perceive it. It has a touch of a fresh aromatic lavender, and then it definitely has this amber wood patchouli base, which just makes it perfect for fall. Um, it gives it so much depth and character, richness, warm and resinous. And I can say that this truly smells incredibly unique. Never smelled anything like it, except for, of course, the EBK Ruby and Vanilla, which I will be featuring in my winter video. So it definitely has that EBK Vanilla DNA, if you know it. It has this kind of champagne sparkling festive quality to it. And this like very well blended citrus note. And this was very kindly gifted to me from the brand. You guys have heard me rave about this in several videos before I got this. So it's always very exciting when a brand gives me something off my wish list. It's like freaking Christmas. And the one I bought myself from EBK, you already know, Deep and Desire Yacht. Again, this is something that some people describe as like a summer gourmand, but to me, I cannot, I cannot wear this in the summer. It's way too sweet. So this is fall perfection. Blueberry, <laughs> sugary blueberry perfume of dreams. This blew my mind when I smelled this because, oh my gosh, it's the most luxurious blueberry muffin turned fragrance perfume ever. And like I've said, it didn't initially appeal to me, the idea of smelling like a blueberry muffin, but trust me when I say, although this is a quite literal gourmand perfume, this smells so much better, so much better than any blueberry muffin. Definitely the luxury fragrance spin to a blueberry muffin. It's ultra jam-packed with that delicious fruity blueberry juice, just bursting at the seams. Big chunks of granulated sugar, some chopped hazelnuts, a little bit of tea on the side, like a little square of dark chocolate. It's so addicting and mouth-watering. Like, I want to eat all the sweets when I wear Deep and Desire Yacht. It has a little bit of grapefruit to give it this freshness. So incredibly yummy. One of my top favorite gourmands ever, like top five for Sure. And if you want to purchase an EBK fragrance or the Discovery set, you can either DM them through their Instagram at EBK Paris or contact them through email address at info at EBKParfums.com. They send you an invoice, you can pay through PayPal, and 
you will get your bottle in days. Next up, one of my favorite vanillas, the boozy vanilla of my dreams, is Mikalef's Note Vani. It has this warm, a little bit cinnamony, toasty vibe. I brought this fragrance and a couple others with me to visit my family several months ago, and this was by far everyone's favorite. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, I love that vanilla. The vanilla is my favorite. It's an extremely likable niche vanilla fragrance. And although this is a boozy fragrance, it has rum and cognac. This is nothing too over the top boozy. It's not like sticking your nose in a liquor bottle. It's extremely smooth, but gives the fragrance this bit of character to not make it a straight up vanilla, even though I think this would definitely make people happy who are looking for a predominantly vanilla fragrance. It smells very natural. Mikalef uses a lot or maybe all natural ingredients. I'm not sure, but I know that they grow a lot of their own ingredients there in grass. Absolutely adore the opening. It's this gorgeous citrus vanilla blend. And as it dries down, it gets that depth, it becomes warmer, resinous, from that amber, it's boozy, it's woody, but it's nothing too deep or too strong. It's very likable. So if you are looking for a likable, boozy, vanilla extract kind of fragrance with this like warm, cozy, cinnamon-like experience, it literally smells like the color amber, that gorgeous warm orange. Nil Devaney. Parfum de Marley Herod, another warm, cozy experience of a fragrance, but this is straight up sexy. When my boyfriend wears this, I am quite literally drooling. Like I cannot get my hands off of him. It is so addicting and mouthwatering. It has a real cinnamon apple spice kind of vibe to it, but the best version of that fragrance category I've tried. Ojan, Angel Share, Ambre Narguile, all, all those kind of fragrances. And although I love the scent profile, I don't need bottles of those because they're too sweet and literal gourmand for me to wear, whereas Herod has this real depth and richness to it. It's very sultry, so it has these notes that ground it. It's woody. We have a very smooth tobacco, an ambery presence, and this sweet, a little smoky incense. If you've never smelled Herod before, you need to, because it truly just like opens the gateway to a whole other, otherworldly realm of fragrance. <laughs> Definitely one of the sexiest fragrances I own. This next one I also got as a sample from Charlie and it is Tom Ford's Oud Wood. And this was the fragrance I was talking about as my fourth pick from Beauty Live that was kindly sent to me, but I didn't include it in my last video because it wasn't a blind pick. So I already knew that I loved it when they reached out to me. Listen, if you love my recommendation of Clean Reserve's Suede Oud, Tom Ford Oudwood is like the older brother to Suede Oud. Oudwood is unisex leaning masculine. It is very clean, polished, chic, put together. It's more potent and it has more presence, in my opinion, than Suede Oud. Suede Oud is definitely going to be the fresher, more airy option. And I would say Suede Oud fits into the spring category a bit more because it's definitely lighter. And I also find it a bit smoother to Suede Oud. I know this is a very popular fragrance, but if you've never smelled it before, this is a very fresh, clean Oud. It's nothing too deep or Middle Eastern smelling. It's not dirty at all, but yes, this is definitely a fresh, woody scent. This is like traditionally deep woody scents turned fresh and clean. We have oud, rosewood, vetiver, and cedar. And it definitely has a pininess to it as well. It's a dry type of fragrance. You're getting spiciness from cardamom and pepper. It has a slightly warm, light resinous quality from amber, and there is vanilla and tonka bean listed. I honestly don't get it, but it's there very lightly just to keep this fragrance from being straight up 
wood. So if you're looking for a nice, clean, fresh, predominantly woody scent, this is a great option. It doesn't have too many things going on. And I know some people struggle with the performance of oud wood. I personally don't have an issue. It goes pretty strong for about five hours for me. But yeah, if you wanted to get this at a discount or a bunch of other fragrances at a discount, Beauty Live is a great place to go. They are an authentic fragrance retailer online and it's always great getting fragrances for some sort of a deal. Next up, BDK's Gris Charnel. I think this is going to be in practically everyone's <laughs> list of fall recommendations. What can I say? It's a good one. It fits the category very well. This is like an unsweetened chai tea with a splash of a creamy, figgy milkiness, but it's predominantly very dry and woody and fresh spicy to my nose. That's the experience I get most. It's a blast of dry sandalwood, fresh spiciness from cardamom, a real aromatic quality from the black tea, a little bit of powderiness from the iris. Like Tom Ford's Oud Wood, this is a very polished kind of fragrance. People say this is like a cozy, rainy day kind of fragrance. I disagree. I personally don't find it cozy at all because of how dry it is. It's woody, it's spicy. So to me, this is very polished. You're looking clean, a very chic, neutral outfit going out on a fall day. And perhaps it's a bit moody outside, it's cloudy. So I get that aspect of the rainy day vibe. And this is actually quite the compliment getter for me, which I was surprised low-key kind of surprised by. This is a very loved fragrance, I'm well aware, but I find that in my day-to-day -day life, the fragrances that are most complimented are, you know, my more feminine perfumes or sweeter perfumes, not so much my more woody dominant fragrances, but people really love this. And if your falls get very, very cold, then I highly recommend the x version. I'll be talking about that one in my winter recommendations video. Next up, we have Frasai's Tiesendu. This is a highly underrated fragrance, and this is another one that truly embodies fall. Like, Amethyst Haze is like the cozy, giving you all the feels of fall. This is like, the holidays fall, like Thanksgiving. We got the family over, it's time for the festivities, the food, the merriment. I don't think another fragrance could suit it better because it is combining the spices, the sweets, the booze, the juniper, if you're someone that, you know, starts setting up garlands and wreaths and Christmas trees in your house early. It's combining all of those very nostalgic, holiday-specific scents in a fragrance. It smells like you are spending Thanksgiving in a rustic wood cabin in a juniper forest. All of your family is over, you're playing games, we're drinking rum in fancy glasses, and someone is baking some sort of like a nutmeg brown sugar pastry in the kitchen. It's so yummy. And it also has a very smooth leather note, which this does not scream leather to me, but it's there kind of to add to the whole picture you're experiencing. Like we have some leather chairs in this so-called cabin. And then like a dry bitter orange that you experience just at the top in the opening. It's so good. It's so underrated. I can't believe I don't hear more people talking about this one. If it sounds like your cup of tea, try it and let me know what you think. It's my favorite from Prasai. All right, listen, it has been a hot minute since I have talked about the love of my life. <sighs> the reason I haven't talked about her is because, you know, she was discontinued and I don't wanna do that to you. But several months ago, our queen, Sharita, Sharita here on YouTube, blessed us with the video Gourmand Coquine is back. And I have never clicked faster on a video because I need, I needed a backup of this. This is something that I will purchase for the rest of my life as long as I can, as long as I can, 
it will be here. We are in a committed relationship. So apparently gourmand coquine is not flat out discontinued, but they do make very small batches. So it's really not accessible, but it's not permanently gone. And if you love this, seriously do not be paying above retail prices for discontinued fragrances. I'm sorry, I love this, but you will not find me paying a dollar more than retail price on a fragrance ever, okay? Fragrance is already expensive as it is. So I purchased a 125 milliliter bottle of Gourmand Coquine. It comes in this gorgeous B bottle. Are you kidding me? I love them both. So a 125 milliliter bottle, where this one is 75 milliliters, for 326 euros, which, you know, clearly that's not an affordable fragrance. However, for the amount of milliliters that you're getting, it's a girl on private line, you know, more luxury experience fragrance, and you're not paying like $600 for like a partial on Mercari or eBay, I think it's fair. Also, this is not the bottle that you spray out of. It comes with this little baby here and you decant your fragrance into this kind of like mini bottle travel spray. Super cute, also a darling bottle and it comes with a shit ton of samples. When I tell you a shit ton, I mean it. It came with a 100 milliliter home fragrance, also in like a gorgeous bee bottle, came with a load of samples, a little mini bottle of Cure Beluga. It was an incredible experience. So I contacted, the website is Place Vendome. They're based in Belgium. I just contacted them, emailed them. They put me on a waiting list. So I had to wait for three months because like I said, they're only making gourmand coquine in these smaller batches. But I wanted to mention it because it is available to purchase if you want to, if you don't mind waiting. But yeah, after the end of three months, they emailed me, they said, all right, we got it in stock. They sent me an invoice. I paid that and I am just overjoyed with my experience. So yeah, let's actually get into the scent now, shall we? I just, it's a lot of information. There is something so special, so addicting like no other about gourmand coquine. I absolutely adore the way they did chocolate in here because often in chocolate fragrances, it can pull one of several different ways. Either it's a very dark, bitter, kind of earthy chocolate um, or an extremely just straight up unsweetened powder chocolate or an extremely gourmand, creamy, sweet, sugary, kind of vanillic milky chocolate. And I'm not into those kind of chocolates because it's just too bitter or earthy or way too literal gourmand for me. And while this is definitely a gourmand fragrance for sure, it also smells like it is meant to be worn. The vanilla that's added in here is the perfect amount. It's not too, too sweet. It's not too sugary, but it softens those chocolate notes because we do have a dark chocolate note and a powdery cacao, but it softens it. It doesn't make it harsh. And then to add more of this like uh, depth, we have some very likable light spices and an ultra smooth rum note. It's honestly not too much of anything. It is the perfect blend, the perfect proportion of all of the ingredients to create this masterpiece. This is one of my boyfriend's favorite scents on me. He will compliment me multiple times in one day. Honestly, not even my boyfriend, anyone that's around me will compliment me multiple times a day when I wear this. Like one of my coworkers was like, damn, you, you are really doing that. You are doing the most. You're really wearing that right now. It is truly one of the best things I've ever smelled. And I don't do backups because I already have a large perfume collection. But if I hear something is hard to get a hold of, something is gonna be discontinued, whatever, like I will happily get a backup of the perfumes that I am hardcore obsessed with. So it was a no brainer to get a backup of this. My love for gourmand coquine is unmatched. To add a little bit of sunshine to your fall days, <laughs> I recommend 
Amouage Sunshine Woman. By the way, anyone can wear this, okay? It says it's marketed towards women, but anyone can wear this and smell amazing. This is a very versatile fragrance. Within like the year that I've been doing fragrance YouTube, for every season that rolls around, I'm like, where am I gonna fit in Amouage Sunshine? Because it definitely has this happy, fruity, uplifting, sunshine-like quality to it from the Osmanthus, which really pulls like apricots, but then it also has a very prevalent white tobacco note, which gives it a lot of edge. And it's not something that in my opinion could be worn on hot days. So I think this is best suited for spring and fall where the weather isn't going too harshly in either direction. But I've decided that I'm pairing it in fall because it truly is a very unique, bold, kind of fragrance. It has a lot of character and personality to it. A lot of edge from the white tobacco, dry almond, patchouli, papyrus, juniper in the base, which this is, by the way, a very well blended perfume. It is extremely difficult to pick out notes. Honestly, the only things that I can straight up identify are the osmanthus, the tobacco, the vanilla, and almond. And I would guess that there was like a woody presence in here as well. The apricot quality comes off like overripe apricots that are like a bit dried in the sun. It has a definite presence to it. Amouage fragrances have killer performance, longevity, all of that. So it's really going to shine in the fall. And the last one, finally, <laughs> that I will be recommending today, thank you so much if you've stuck around till the end, is Rosendo Matu's number five. This is an electric fragrance, very airy and sensual as the name would suggest. We got floral, amber, sensual musk. And to be honest, this is not a floral dominant fragrance to my nose whatsoever. Yes, we have some exotic florals listed, but that's not what shines to me in here. What is the most prevalent in this fragrance to me is the saffron. It is an airy saffron bomb, like in your face saffron. So you have to enjoy Saffron, which it's one of my favorite notes. I find it very addicting and you just automatically smell exotic and intriguing if you're wearing a saffron perfume. The way this leaves a trail, the way it lingers, it sticks in the air. Wherever you go, it will leave reminiscence of your aura behind. And it's made with a translucent amber. So if you're not a fan of your traditional amber fragrances where they are like very spicy or Middle Eastern, deep, dark, resinous. This is not that. It's like I said, very translucent, very airy. A sensual, fluffy, clean musk, and then this powdery, dainty vanilla. And when I smell this, I like interpret it to be feminine, but I also think it would be very intriguing on a man. And also this would make like a great layering fragrance as well to add this little bit of like, uh, very, very good. I think if you enjoy MFK Baccarat Rouge 540, you might enjoy Rosendo Matus number five. Not that they smell the same, but they have a similar type of energy, not only in the way that they behave with this airy quality that just lingers forever, but also just the kind of energy and vibe that they give across without smelling like each other. I hope that makes sense. So that finally wraps up my list of today for my top recommendations of fall niche and luxury designer fragrances. Stay tuned for part two next week's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.